The Journalists and Minus by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I chanced the other eve, but how I ne'er will tell, the paper to receive that's published down in hell. In general, one may guess, I little care to see this free corps of press got up so easily. But suddenly my eyes a side note chanced to meet, and fancy my surprise at reading in the sheet. For twenty weary springs, the post from Erebus, remark me, always brings unpleasant news to us. Through want of water we have well nigh lost our breath. In great perplexity hell came and asked for death. They can wade through the sticks, catch crabs in Leith's flood. Old Charon's in a fix, his boat lies in the mud. The dead leap over there, the young and old as well. The boatman gets no fare, and loudly curses hell. King Minus bade his spies in all directions go. The devil's needs must rise and bring him news below. Hurrah, the secret's told, they've caught the robber's nest. A merry feast let's hold, come hell and join the rest. An author's countless band stalked round Cocytus brink, each bearing in his hand a glass for holding ink. And into casks they drew the water, strange to say, as boys suck sweet wine through an elder reed in play. Quick, o'er them cast the net, ere they have time to flee. Warm welcome ye will get. So come to Sanssouci. Smelt by the king ere long, he sharpened up his tooth, and thus addressed the throng, full angrily in truth. Uh, the robbers, is it we see? What trade, what land perchance? German news writers we, enough to make us dance. A wish I long have known to bid ye stop and dine, ere ye by death were moan, that brother-in-law of mine. Yet now by sticks I swear, whose flood ye would imbibe, that torments and despair shall fill your vermin tribe. The pitcher seeks the well, till broken tis one day. They who for ink would smell, the penalty must pay. So seize them by their thumbs, and loosen straight my beast. E'en now he licks his gums, impatient for the feast. How quivered every limb beneath the bulldog's jaws, their honors baited him, and he allowed no pause. Convulsively they swear, still writhe the rabble rout, engaged with anxious care in pumping Lethe out. Ye Christians, good and meek, this vision bear in mind, if journalists ye seek, attempt their thumbs to find. Defects they often hide as folks whose hairs are gone, we see with wigs supplied, Probatum, I have done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bacchus in the Pillory by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org. Twirl him, twirl him, blind and dumb, deaf and dumb, twirl the cane so troublesome sprigs of fashion by the dozen thou dost bring to book good cousin cousin thou art not in clover many a head that's filled with smoke thou hast twirled and well nigh broke many a clever one perplexed many a stomach sorely vexed turning it completely over many a hat put on awry many a lamb chased cruelly made streets houses edges trees dance around us fools with ease therefore thou art not in clover therefore thou like other folk hast thy head filled full of smoke therefore thou too art perplexed and thy stomach's sorely vexed for tis turned completely over therefore thou art not in clover Twirl him, twirl him, blind and dumb, deaf and dumb, twirl the carl so troublesome. Seest thou how our tongues and wits thou hast shivered into bits? Seest thou this licentious white, how we're fastened to a string, whirled around in giddy ring, making all like night appear, filling with strange sounds our ear? 
when it in the stocks are right. When our ears wild noises shook, on the sky we cast no look, neither stock nor stone were viewed, but were punished as we stood. Seest thou now, licentious white, that to us yon flaring sun is the Heidelberger's tun? Castles, mountains, trees, and towers seem like choppin' cups of ours. Learnest thou now, licentious white? Learn it in the stocks all right. Twirl him, twirl him, blind and dumb, deaf and dumb, twirl the carl so troublesome. Kinsman, one so full of glee, kinsman, where's thy drollery? Where thy tricks, thou cunning one? All thy tricks are spent and past, to the devil gone at last, like a silly fop thou'lt prate, like a washerwoman rate, thou art but a simpleton. Now thou mayest, more shame to thee, run away because of me. Cupid, that young rogue may glory, learning wisdom from thy story, haste thou sluggard hence to flee. As from glasses cut our wit, so like lightning twill be split. If thou won't be chased away, let each folly also stay. Seest my meaning? Think of me. Idle one, away with thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spinoza by Friedrich Schiller, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. A mighty oak here ruined lies, its top was wont to kiss the skies. Why is it now o'erthrown? The peasants needed, so they said, its wood wherewith to build a shed, and so they've cut it down. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Fates by Friedrich Schiller, read for LibriVox.org by Mill Adrienne. Not in the crowd of masqueraders gay, where coxcombs wit with wondrous splendour flares, and, easier than the Indians net the prey, the virtue of young beauty's snares. Not at the toilet table of the fair, where vanity, as if before an idol, bows, and often breathes a warmer prayer, than when to heaven it pays its vows and not behind the curtain's cunning veil, where the world's eye is hid by cheating night, and glowing flames the hearts assail, that seemed but chilly in the light. Where wisdom we surprise with shame-dyed lip, while Phoebus's rays she boldly drinks, where men like thievish children nectar sip, and from the spheres e'en Plato sinks. To ye, to ye, O lonely sister band, daughters of destiny, ascend, when o'er the lie all gently sweeps my hand, These strains where bliss and sadness blend. You only has no sonnet ever wooed, To win your gold no usurer e'er sighed, No coxcomb e'er with plaints your steps pursued, For you, Arcadian shepherd, ne'er has died. Your gentle fingers ye forever ply, Life's nervous thread with care to twist, till sound the clanging shears, and fruitlessly the tender web would then resist. Since thou my thread of life hast kindly spun, thy hand, O Clotho, I now kiss, since thou hast spared that life while scarce began, receive this nosegay, Lachesis. Full often thorns upon the thread, but oftener roses thou hast strung, for thorns and roses there outspread, Clotho, to these this lay be sung. Oft did tempestuous passions rise, and threat to break the thread by force. Oft projects of gigantic size have checked its free, unfettered course. Oft, in sweet hours of heavenly bliss, too fine appeared the thread to me. Still oftener, when near sorrow's dark abyss, too firm its fabric seemed to be. Clotho, for this and other lies, thy pardon I with tears implore, Henceforth I'll take whatever prize Sage Clotho gives and asks no more. 
But never let the shears cut off a rose, only the thorns, yet as thou wilt'st, let, if thou wilt'st, the death shears sharply close, if thou this single prayer fulfill'st. O oh goodness, when, enchained to Laura's breath, my spirit from its shell breaks free, betraying when, upon the gates of death, my youthful life hangs giddily. Let to infinity the thread extend, twill wander through the realms of bliss, then, goddess, let thy cruel shears descend, then let them fall, O Lachesis. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Parallel by Friedrich Schiller, read for LibriVox.org by Mel Adrienne. Her likeness Madame Ramler bids me find, I try to think in vain, to whom or how, beneath the moon, there's nothing of the kind, I'll show she's like the moon, I vow. The moon, she rouges, steals the sun's bright light, by eating stolen bread her living makes, is also wont to paint her cheeks at night, while, with untiring ardour, she coquettes. The moon, for this may Herod give her thanks, reserves her best till night may have returned. Our lady swallows up by day the franks, that she at night time may have earned. The moon first swells, and then is once more lean, as surely as the month comes round. With Madame Ramler tis the same, I ween, but she to need more time is found. The moon, to love her silver horns, is said, but makes a sorry show. She likes them on her husband's head, she's right to have it so. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Klopstock and Wieland by Frederick Schiller, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Klopstock and Wieland, when their miniatures were hanging side by side. In truth, when I have crossed dark leaths of river, the man upon the right I'll love forever, for twas he that first wrote for me. For all the world the left man wrote, full clearly, and so we all should love him dearly. Come, left man. I must needs kiss thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Muse's Revenge by Frederick Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. An Antidote of Helicon. Once the nine all weeping came to the god of song. Oh, Papa, they there exclaim, Hear our tale of wrong young ink liquors swarm about our dear helicon there they fight manoeuvre shout even to thy throne on their steeds they gallop hard to the spring to drink each one calls himself a bard minstrels only think there they how the thing to name would our persons treat this without a blush of shame we can ne'er repeat one in front of all then cries i the army lead both his fists he wildly plies like a bear indeed others wakes he in a trice with his whistlings rude but none follow though he twice has those sounds renewed he'll return he threats ere long and he'll come no doubt father friend to lyric song please to show him out father phoebus laughing hears the complaint they've brought don't be frightened pray my dears we'll soon cut them short one must hasten to hell-fire go malpomene let a fury borrow lear notes and dress of thee let her meet in this array one of these vile crews as though she had lost her way soon as night ensues then with kisses dark i trust they all the dear child greet satisfying their wild lust just as it is meet said and done then one from hell soon was dressed aright scarcely had the prey they tell caught the fellow's sight then as kites a pigeon follow they attacked her straight part not all though i can swallow of what folks relate if fair boys were amongst the band how came they to be this i cannot understand in such company the goddess a miscarriage had good black 
and was delivered of an almanac end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hypochondriacal pluto a romance by frederick schiller read for LibriVox .org. book one the sullen mayor who reigns in hell by mortals pluto height who thrashes all his subjects well both morn and eve as stories tell and rules the realms of night all pleasure lost in cursing once all joy in flogging for the nuns the sedentary life he led upon his brazen chair made his hind quarters very red while pricks as from a nettle bed he felt both here and there a burning sun to chance to shine and boil down all his blood to brine tis true he drank full many a draught of phlegathon's black flood by cupping leeches doctor's craft and venesection fore and aft they took from him much blood full many a clyster was applied and purging too was also tried his doctor versed in sciences with wig beneath his hat argued and shoved with wondrous ease from celsus and hippocrates when he in judgment sat right worshipful the mayor of hell the liver's wrong i see full well but he's a booby pluto said with all his trash and pills a man like me pray where's his head a young man yet his wits have fled a youth my veins yet fills unless electuaries he'll bring full in his face my club i'll fling or right or wrong twas a hard case to weather such a trial poor men who lose the king's good grace he's straight saluted in the face by every splint and file he very wisely made no fuss this hint he learnt from cerberus go fetch the barber of the skies apollo to me soon an airy courtier straightway flies upon his beast and onward hies and skims past poles and moon as he went off the clock struck four at five his charger reached the door just then apollo happened high ho a sonnet to have made oh dear me no upon miss i o oh, such is the tale i heard from cleo the midwife to have played the boy as if stamped out of wax might zeus as father fairly tax he read the letter half asleep then startled in dismay the road is long and hell is deep your rocks i know are rough and steep yet like a king he'll pay he dons his cap of mist and furs then through the air the charger spurs with lax all frizzled a la mode and ruffles smooth and nice in all a dress that brightly glowed a gift aurora had bestowed with watch chains of high price with toes turned out and chapeau bas he stood before hell's mighty czar book two the grumbler in his usual tone received him with a curse to pomerania straight be gone ah how he smells of a day cologne why brimstone isn't worse he'd best be off to heaven again or he'll infect hell's wide domain the god of pills in sore surprise a spring then backwards took is this his highness's usual guise tis in the brain i see that lies the mischief what a look see how his eyes in frenzy roll the case is bad upon my soul a journey to elysium the infectus would dissolve making the saps less tough become as through the capitolium and stomach they resolve provisionally be it so let's start then but incognito ay worthy sir no doubt well meant if in these regions hazy as with you folk so charged with scent you dapper ones who heaven frequent where proper to be lazy if hell a master needed not why then i'd follow on the spot ha 
if the cat once turned his back pray where would be the mice they'd sally forth from every crack my very mufti would attack spoil all things in a trice odds bodikins tis pretty cool i'll let him see i'm no such fool a pleasant uproar happened erst when they assailed my tower no fault of mine twas at the worst that from their desks and chains to burst philosophers had power what has their air escaped a poet help heaven what misery to know it when days are long folks talk more stuff upon your seats no doubt with all your cards and music rough and scribblings too tis hard enough the moment to eke out idleness like a flea will gnaw on velvet cushion as on straw my brother no attempt omits to drive away ennui his lightning round about him flits the target with his storms he hits those howls prove that to me till rhea's trembling shoulders ache and force me e'en for hell to quake were i grandfather coelus though you wouldn't soon escape into my belly straight you'd go and in your swaddling clothes cry oh and through five windows gape first o'er my stream you'd have to come and then perhaps to elysium your steed you mounted i dare say in hopes to catch a goose if it is worth the trouble pray tell me what you've heard from me to-day at shaving time to zeus just leave him then to swallow it i don't care what he thinks a bit you'd better now go homeward straight your servant there's the door for all your pains one moment wait i'll give you liberal is the rate a piece of ruby ore in heaven such things are rarities we use them for base purposes book three the god at once then said farewell at small politeness striving then sudden through the crowds of hell a flying courier rushed pell-mell from tellus's bounds arriving monarch a doctor follows me behold this wondrous prodigy place for the doctor each one said he comes with spurs and whip to every one he nods his head as if he had been born and bred in tartarus's the rip as jaunty fearless full of nous as britons in the lower house good morrow worthy sires ahem i'm glad to see that here where all they of prometheus stem must come whene'er the fates condemn one meets with such good cheer why for elysium care a rush i'd rather see hell's fountains gush stop stop his impudence i vow its due reward he'll meet by charles's vein i swear it now he must no questions i'll allow prescribe for me a receipt all hell is mine i'm pluto height make haste to bring your wares to light the doctor with a knowing look the swarthy king surveyed he neither felt his pulse nor took the usual steps see galen's book no difference it would have made as piercing as electric fire he eyed him to his heart's desire monarch i'll tell thee in a trice the thing that's needed here though desperate may seem the advice the case itself is very nice and children dragons fear devil must devil eat no more either a wife or hellebore whether she scold or sportive play tween these no mediums known she'll drive the incubus away that has assailed thee many a day upon thine iron throne she'll make the nimble spirits fleet up towards the head down towards the feet long may the doctor honoured be who let this saying fall he ought to have his effigy by phidias sculptured so that he may be discerned by all a monument forever thriving borhav hippocrates surviving end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Reproach to Laura by Friedrich Schiller, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Reproach to Laura. Maiden, stay! Oh, whither wouldst thou go? Do I still or pride or grandeur show? Maiden, was it right? Thou, the giant, madest a dwarf once more, scatterest far the mountains that of yore climbed to glory's sunny height. Thou hast doomed my flowerets to decay, all the phantoms bright hast blown away, whose sweet follies formed the hero's trust, all my plans that proudly raised their head, thou dost with gentle zephyr tread, prostrate, laughing in the dust. To the godhead eagle-like I flew, smiling fortune's juggling wheel to view, careless wheresoe'er her ball might fly, hovering far beyond Cocytus away death and life receiving like a slave life and death from out one beaming eye like the victors who with thunder lance on the iron plain of glory dance starting from their mistress breast from aurora's rosy bed upsprings god's bright sun to roam o'er towns of kings and to make the young world blessed toward the hero doth this heart still strain drink i eagle still the fiery rain of thine eye that burneth to destroy in glances that destructive gleam laura's love i see with sweetness beam weep to see it like a boy my repose like yonder image bright dancing in the waters cloudless light maiden hath been slain by thee on the dizzy height now totter i laura if from me my laura fly Oh, the thought to madness hurries me. Gladly shout the revelers as they quaff raptures in the leaf-crowned goblet laugh. Jests within the golden wine have birth since the maiden hath enslaved my mind. I have left each youthful sport behind. Friendless roam I o'er the earth. Hear I still bright glory's thunder tone? Doth the laurel still allure me on? Doth thou lyre Apollo Cynthius? in my breast no echoes now arise every shame-faced muse and sorrow flies and thou too apollo cynthius shall i still be as a woman tame do my pulses at my country's name proudly burst their prison thralls would i boast the eagle's soaring wing do i long with roman blood to spring when my herman calls oh how sweet the eyes wild gaze divine sweet to quaff the incense at that shrine prouder bolder swells the breast that which once set every sense on fire that which once could every nerve inspire scarce a half smile now hath power to rest that orion might receive my fame on the time floods heaving waves my name rocked in glory in the mighty tide so that cronus dreaded scythe has shivered when against my monument is quivered towering toward the firmament in pride smilest thou no to me not perished and now star and laurel all to fools allow to the dead their marble cell love hath granted all as my reward high or man twere easy to have soared so i love him well in the poem this recording is in the public domain. The Simple Peasant by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org Gossip you'll like to hear, no doubt. A learned work has just come out. Messiah's is the name to bear. The man has traveled through the air, and on the sun-besplattered roads, has lost shoe-leather by whole loads, has seen the heavens lie open wide, and hell has traversed with whole hide. The thought has just occurred to me, that one so skilled as he must be, may tell us how our flax and wheat arise, what say you shall i try to ascertain you fool to think that any one so wise about mere flax and corn would rack his brain 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Octeon by Frederick Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Thy wife is destined to deceive thee. She'll seek another's arms and leave thee, and horns upon thy head will shortly sprout. How dreadful that when bathing thou should see me, no ether bath can wash the stigma out, and then in perfect innocence shouldst flee me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Man's Dignity by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org I am a man. Let every one who is a man too spring with joy beneath God's shining sun and leap on high and sing. To God's own image, fair on earth, its stamp I've power to show. Down to the front where heaven has birth, with boldness I dare go. Tis well that I both dare and can, when I, a maiden, see. A voice exclaims, Thou art a man. I kiss her tenderly. And redder then the maiden grows, her bodice seems too tight. That I'm a man the maiden knows, her bodice therefore is tight. Will she perchance for pity cry, if unawares she's caught? She finds that I'm a man, then why by her is pity sought? I am a man, and if alone, she sees me drawing near. I make the emperor's daughter run, though ragged I appear. This golden watchword wins the smile of many a princess fair. They call, ye'd best look out the while, ye gold-laced fellows there. That I am a man is fully shown, whenever my lyre I sweep. It thunders out a glorious tone, it otherwise would creep. The spirit that my veins now hold, my manhood calls its brother, and both command like lions bold and fondly greet each other from out this same creative flood from which we men have birth both godlike strength and genius bud and everything of worth my talisman all tyrants hates and strikes them to the ground or guides us gladly through life's gates to where the dead are found. Even Pompey, at Pharsalia's fight, my talisman overthrew. On German sand it hurled with might Rome's sensual children, too. Didst see the Roman proud and stern sitting on Africa's shore? His eyes like Hecla seem to burn, and fiery flames outpour then comes a frank and merry knave and spreads it through the land tell them that thou on carthage's grave hast seen great marius stand thus speaks the son of rome with pride still mighty in his fall he is a man and not beside before him tremble all his grandsons afterwards began their portions to overthrow and thought it well that every man should learn with grace to crow. For shame, for shame, once more for shame, the wretched ones, they've even squandered the tokens of their fame, the choicest gifts of heaven. God's counterfeit has sinfully disgraced his form divine, and in his vile humanity has wallowed like the swine. The face of earth each vainly treads, like gourds that boys in sport have hollowed out to human heads with skulls whose brains are not. Like wine that by a chemist's art 
is through retorts refined their spirits to the deuce depart the phlegm is left behind from every woman's face they fly its very aspect dread and if they dared and could not why twere better they were dead they shun all worthies when they can grief at their joy they prove the man who cannot make a man a man can never love the world i proudly wander over and plume myself and sing i am a man whoever is more than leap on high and spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain the messiah by friedrich schiller read for librivox.org by linda olson fitak los angeles the messiah religion twas produced this poem's fire perverted also prithee don't inquire end of poem this recording is in the public domain thoughts on the first october 1781 by frederick schiller read for librivox.org by abigail johnston what mean the joyous sounds from a yonder vine-clad height what the exulting evo why glows the cheek who missed that i with pinions life swinging the lofty thyrsus see is it the genius whom the gladsome throng obeys do i his numerous train descry in plenty's teeming horn the gifts of heaven he sways and reels from the very ecstasy see how the golden grape in glorious beauty shines kissed by the earliest morning beams a shadow of yon bower how lovingly it signs as it with countless blessing teems ha glad october thou art welcome unto me october's first-born welcome thou thanks of a purer kind than all who worship thee more heartfelt thanks i'm bringing now for thou to me the one whom i have loved so well and love with fondness to the grave who merits in my heart for evermore to dwell the best of friends in reader sixty four gave tis true thy breath doth rock the leaves upon the trees and sadly make their charms decay gently they fall and swift as morning fantasies with those who awaken fly away tis true that on thy track the fleecy spoiler hastes who makes all nature's chords resound with discord dull and turns the plains and groves to wastes so that they sadly mourn around see how the gloomy forms of years as on they roll each joyous banquet overthrows when an uplifted hand from out the foaming bowl joy's noble purple brightly flows see how they disappear when friends sweet converse hold and lovingly wander arm in arm and to revenge themselves on winter's north wind cold upon each other's breasts grow warm and when spring's children smile upon us once again when all the youthful splendor bright when each melodious note of each sweet rapturous strain awakens with it each delight how joyous then the stream that our whole soul pervades what life from out our glances pours sweet philomela's song sounding through the glades ourselves our youthful strength restores oh may this whisper breathe let rigor bear in mind the storm by which in age we're bent his guardian angel when the evening star so kind gleams softly from the firmament in silence be he led to yonder thundering height and guided be his eye that he in valley and on plain may see his friends aright and that with a growing ecstasy on yonder holy spot where he their number tells he may experience friendship's bliss now first unveiled until with pride his bosom swells conscious that all their love is his and will the distant voice be loudly heard to say and g too is a friend of thine when silvery locks no more around his temples play g still will be a friend of thine e in yonder and now in his eye the crystal tear will gleam e in yonder will he love love thee too when his heart in yonder spring-like sphere linked on to thine can rapture prove end of poem this recording is in the public domain epitaph by friedrich schiller read for LibriVox.org by linda olson fitak los angeles epitaph here lies a man cut off by fate too soon for all good men for sextons he died late too late for those who wield the pen 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Quarrel by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Olson Feitak, Los Angeles. Quarrel. You tell me that you feel surprised because Quarrel's paper has grown in size, and yet they're crying through the street that there's a rise in bread and meat. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Plague, a Fantasy by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Victoria Wilson. Plague's contagious, murderous breath, God's strong might with terror reveals, as vove a dreary valley of death, with its brotherhood fell its steels. Fearfully throbs the anguish struck heart, horribly quivers each nerve in the frame, frenzy's wild laughs the torment proclaim, howling convulsions disclose the fierce smart. Fierce delirium rives upon the bed, poisonous mists hang over the city's dead, men all haggard, pale, and wan, to the shadow realm press on. Death lies brooding in the humid air, plague in dark graves, piles up treasures fair, and its voice exultingly raises. Funeral silence, churchyard calm, rapture change to dread alarm, thus the plague God wildly praises. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Monument of Moore the Robber by Frederick Schiller Read for LibriVox.org Tis ended! Welcome! Tis ended, O thou sinner majestic! All thy terrible part is now played. Noble abased one! thou of thy race beginner and ender wondrous son of her fearfullest humour mother nature's blunder sublime through cloud-covered night a radiant gleam hark now beneath him the portals are closing night's gloomy jaws veil him darkly in shade nations are trembling at his destructive splendour afraid thou art welcome tis ended o thou sinner majestic all thy terrible part is now played crumble decay in the cradle of wide open heaven terrible sight to each sinner that breathes when the hot thirst for glory raises its barriers over against the dread throne see to eternity shame has consigned thee to the bright stars of fame thou hast clambered aloft on the shoulders of shame yet time will come when shame will crumble beneath thee when admiration at last will be thine with moist eye by thy sepulchre dreaded man has passed onward rejoice in the tears that man sheddeth o thy soul of the judged with moist eye by the sepulchre dreaded lately a maiden passed onward hearing the fearful announcement told of thy deeds by the herald of marble and the maiden rejoiced thee rejoiced thee sought not to dry up her tears far away i stood as the pearls were falling and i shouted amalia o ye youths o ye youths with the dangerous lightning of genius learn to play with more caution wildly his bit clamps the charger of phoebus though neath the reins of his master more gently he rocks earth and heaven reined by a child's hand he kindles earth and heaven in blazing destruction obstinate phaeton perished buried beneath the sad wreck child of the heavenly genius glowing bosom all panting for action art thou charmed by the tale of my robber glowing like time was his bosom and panting for action he like thee was the child of the heavenly genius but thou smilest and goest thy gaze flies through the realms of the world's long story moor the robber it finds not there stay thou youth and smile not still survive all his sins and his shame robber moor liveth in all but name end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. The Bad Monarchs by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Bad Monarchs Earthly gods, my lyre shall win your praise, Though but won't its gentle sounds to raise, When the joyous feasts the people throng. Softly at your pompous sounding names, Shyly round your greatness purple flames, Trembles now my song. Answer, shall I strike the golden string, When, borne on my exultation's wing, O'er the battlefield your chariots trail? When ye, from the iron grasp set free, For your mistress' soft arms joyously, Change your ponderous mail? Shall my daring hymn ye gods resound, While the golden splendor gleams around, Where, by mystic darkness overcome, With a thunderbolt your spleen may play, Or in crime humanity array, Till the grave is dumb? Say, shall peace neath crowns be now my theme? Shall I boast, ye princes, that ye dream? While the worm the monarch's heart may tear, Golden sleep twines round the moor by stealth, As he, at the palace, guards the wealth, Guards, but covets ne'er. Show how kings and galley slaves, my muse, Lovingly one single pillow use, How their lightnings flatter, when suppressed, when their humors have no power to harm, when their mimic miniatures are calm, and the lions rest. Up thou, Hecate, with thy magic seal, make the barred up grave its wealth reveal. Hark, its doors like thunder open spring. When death's dismal blast is heard to sigh, and the hair on end stands fearfully, Prince's bliss I sing. Do I hear the strand, the coast, detect where your wishes haughty fleet was wrecked, where was stayed your greatness proud career, that they near with glory may grow warm, night with black and terror spreading arm, forges monarchs here. On the death chest sadly gleams the crown, with its heavy load of pearls weighed down, and the scepter needed now no more. In what splendor is the mold arrayed, ye but worms are with the body paid, that the world watched o'er. Haughty plants within that humble bed, see how death their pomp decayed and fled, with unblushing ribaldry besets. They who ruled o'er north and east and west, suffer now his every nauseous jest, and no sultan threats. Leap for joy, ye stubborn dumb, today, in your heavy slumber shake away, from the battle victory upsprings. Hearken to the trump's exultant song, ye are worshipped by the shouting throng. Rouse ye then, ye kings. Seven sleepers to the clarion hark, how it rings, and how the fierce dogs bark, shouts from out a thousand barrels whiz. Eager steeds are neighing for the wood. Soon the bristly boar rolls in his blood. Yours the triumph is. But what now? Are even princes dumb? Toward me scornful echoes ninefold come, stealing through the vault's terrific gloom. Sleep assails the page by slow degrees, and Madonna gives to you the keys of her sleeping room. Not an answer hushed and still is all. Does the veil then e'en on monarchs fall, which enshrouds their humble flatterous glance? And ye ask for worship in the dust, since the blind jade, fate, a world has thrust in your purse perchance. And ye clatter giant puppet troops, marshalled in your proudly childish groups, like the juggler on the opera scene. Though the sound may please the vulgar ear, yet the skilful, filled with sadness jeer, 
power so great but mean let your towering shame be hid from sight in the garment of a sovereign's right from the ambush of the throne outspring tremble though before the voice of song through the purple vengeance will ere long strike down e'en a king end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Seder and My Muse by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Seder and My Muse An age Seder sought around my muse to pass, Attempting to pay court, and eyed her fondly through his glass. By Phoebus' golden torch, by Luna's pallid light, Around her temple's porch, crept the unhappy sharp-eared white and warbled many a lay her beauty's praise to sing and fiercely scraped away on his discordant fiddle string with tears too swelled his eyes as large as nuts are larger he gasped forth heavy sighs like music from Selenus's charger the muse sat still and played within her grotto fair and peevishly surveyed signor adonis goat's foot there who ever would kiss thee thou ugly dirty dunce wouldst thou a gallant be as midas was apollo once speak out old horned boor what charms canst thou display thou'rt swarthy as a moor and shaggy as a beast of prey i'm by a bard adored in far Teutonia's land, to him who strikes the chord, I'm linked in firm and loving band. She spoke and straightway fled, the spoiler he pursued her, and by his passion led, soon caught her, shouted, and thus wooed her. Thou prudish one, stay, stay, and hearken on to me, thy poet I dare say repents the pledge he gave thee behold this pretty thing no merit would i claim its weight i often fling on many a clown's back to his shame his sharpness it increases and spices his discourse instilling learned thesis when mounted on his hobby horse the best of songs are known thanks to this heavy whip yet fool's blood tis alone we see beneath its lashes drip this lash then shall be his if thou'lt give me a smack then thou mayest hasten miss upon thy german sweetheart's track the muse with purpose sly ere long agreed to yield the satyr said good-bye and now the lash i wield and i won't drop it here believe in what i say the kisses of one's dear one does not lightly throw away they kindle rapture sweet but fools ne'er know their flame the gentle muse will kneel at honour's feet but cudgels those who mar her fame end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Peasants by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Peasants Look outside, good friend, I pray, Two whole mortal hours. Dogs and I've out here today, Waited by the powers. Rain comes down as from a spout, Doomsday storms rage round about. Dripping are my hose, drenched a coat to mantle too coat to mantle both just new wretched plight heaven knows pretty stirs abroad to-day look outside good friend i pray ay the devil look outside out is blown my lamp gloom and night the heavens now hide moon and stars decamp stumbling over stock and stone jerkin coat 
I've torn Achon. Let me pity beg hedges, bushes all around. Here's a ditch, and there's a mound, breaking arm and leg. Gloom and night, the heavens now hide. Ay, the devil, look outside. Ay, the deuce, then look outside. Listen to my prayer. Praying, singing, I have tried. Wouldst thou have me swear? I shall be a steaming mass, freeze to rock and stone, alas, if I don't remove. All this love I owe to thee, winter bumps thou'lt make for me, thou confounded love. Cold and gloom spread far and wide, I the deuce, then look outside. Thousand thunders, what's this now? From the window shoots? Oh, thou witch, tis dirt, I vow, that my head salutes. Rain, frost, hunger, tempest wild, bear I for the devil's child. Now I'm vexed full sore. Worse and worse tis, I'll be gone. Pray, be quick, thou evil one. I'll remain no more. Pretty tumult there's outside. Fare thee well, I'll homeward stride. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Winter Night by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schampf. Farewell, the beauteous sun is sinking fast. The moon lifts up her head. Farewell. Mute night, o'er earth's wide round at last, Her darksome raven wing has spread. Across the wintry plain no echoes float, Save from a rock's deep womb. The murmuring streamlet and the screech-owl's note Are rising from the forest's gloom. The fish repose within the watery deeps, The snail draws in his head. The dog beneath the table calmly sleeps. My wife is slumbering in her bed. A hearty welcome to ye, brethren mine, friends of my life's young spring. Perchance around a flask of Rhenish wine ye're gathered now in joyous ring. The brimming goblet's bright and purple beams mirror the world with joy, and pleasure from the golden grape juice gleams, pleasure untainted by alloy. Concealed behind departed years, your eyes find roses now alone. And as the summer tempest quickly flies, your heavy sorrows too are flown. From childish sports to e'en the doctor's hood, the book of life ye thumb, and reckon o'er in light and joyous mood your toils in the gymnasium. Ye count the oaths that Terence, may he ne'er though buried calmly slumber, cause you despite Minelli's notes to swear, count your wry faces without number. How when the dread examinations came, the boy with terror shook. How when the rector had pronounced his name, the sweat streamed down upon his book. All this is now involved in mist forever. The boy is now a man, and Frederick, wiser grown, discloses never what little Fritz once loved to plan. At length a doctor one's declared to be, a regimental one, and then, and not too soon, discover we that plans so bubbles are alone. Blow on, blow on, and let the bubbles rise, if but this heart remain. And if a German laurel as the prize of song, tis given me to gain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wirtemberger by Friedrich Schiller, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Olsen Feitag, Los Angeles. The Wirtemberger. The name of Wirtemberg they hold to come from Wirt am Berg. I'm told, a Wirtemberger who never drinks, no Wirtemberger is, methinks. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mole by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Olsen Feitak, 
Los Angeles. The Mole. Husband. The boy's my very image, see. Even the scars my smallpox left me. Wife. I can believe it easily. They once of all my senses reft me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hymn to the Eternal by Friedrich Schiller. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Twixt the heavens and earth, high in the airy ocean, in tempest's cradle I'm borne with a rocking motion. Clouds are towering, storms beneath me are lowering, giddily all the wonders I see, and, O Eternal, I think of thee. All thy terrible pomp lend to the finite now. Mighty nature, O of infinity thou, giant daughter, mirror God as in water. Tempest, O let thine organ peal, God to the reasoning worm reveal. Hark, it peals, how the rocks quiver beneath its growls. Zeboeth's glorious name, wildly the hurricane howls, graving the while with the lightning style. Creatures, do ye acknowledge me? Spare us, Lord, we acknowledge thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dialogue by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org by Abigail Johnston A. Hark, neighbor, for one moment stay. Herr Dr. Scalpel, so they say, has got off safe and sound. At Paris I, your uncle, found fast to a horse's crupper bound. Get Scalpel made a king his prey. B. Oh, dear me, no! A real misnomer. The fact is, he has his diploma. The other one has not. A. Eh? What? Has a diploma? In Squavia may such things be got? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epitaph on a Certain Physiognomist by Friedrich Schiller Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson On every nose he rightly read What intellects were in the head and yet that he was not the one by whom god meant it to be done this on his own he never read end of poem this recording is in the public domain trust in immortality by friedrich schiller read for librivox dot org by larry wilson the dead has risen here to live through endless ages this i with firmness trust and know i was first led to guess it by the sages the knaves convince me that tis really so end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of suppressed poems by friedrich schiller